Hi, Islamic Dad here. Uh, if you enjoy this channel, um, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot. I'm going to do a video on um, some red flags um, that I had remembered um, that I've encountered. And I don't think that I've mentioned these specific red flags in the past. Um, so I thought it'd be good to um, do a video on these. So the first... Um, I guess red flag that I'll touch on is um, reciprocity. Um, I've noticed that, you know, especially with my, you know, um, covert narcissist ex-girlfriend, that the idea of reciprocity was not only alien, it was repugnant to her. And she stated as much. You know, with, with normal people, when, you know, you're in a relationship, you know, especially, you know, the idea of reciprocity means a lot. I mean, I would say for me, um, it's foundational and that a, you know, a relationship cannot be um, functioning, you know, be productive, be healthy if reci reciprocity is missing. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, you know, it's like a baseline need for a healthy relationship. So it was very, um, jarring when I noticed the discrepancy, you know, in the relationship and I brought it up and her reaction was, um, you know, d not only defensive, but just, you know, kind of digging her heels in and you know going into manipulation mode and basically having this debate about reciprocity and how you know her argument was that um, things should be given without any expectation of receiving anything back um which is fine um but at the same time i think giving something back is how you let someone know you love them. Um, it's not, you know, it, it would be one thing if you get, if you literally give a gift or something and you're just like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, you know, give me something back. You know, that that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, <laughs> say something as um, innocuous as giving a back rub. So you, you rub your partner's back, work their traps, and they're like, oh my God, you know, that's great. I feel so much better. And you wouldn't, you know, it's not like you're necessarily, you know, being on the sly asking for a back rub, but it's very natural for your partner then to be like, hey, would you like me to massage your back? You know, something like that. And um, again, um, for my covert, you know, narcissist ex-girlfriend, that was alien. And again, like through the manipulation, you know, and, you know, t to some extent word salad, um, you know, she was like, no, in relationships, um, there should be no expectation of reciprocity at all. That's app, you know, she said that's actually manipulation. And that if I have any needs, I need to state them and um, ask for them explicitly. Ooh. And that's the thing. Narcissists are experts at debating and arguing and manipulating through words. And it's, it's not necessarily that I disagree with the specifics of what she said, but in the context of a loving relationship, reciprocity is healthy. And if anything expected, and if, um, you know, and again, if I could go and hop in a time machine and go back and talk to myself, you know, not having reciprocity in a relationship is a huge, huge red flag. Um, so that's one, um, you know, kind of, um, a tangent to that was, um, you know, uh, some, uh, some weird experiences that I had with, um, future faking. 
and the way that even future faking went off in a weird direction with my, um, you know, covert narcissist ex, where when we had talked about um, the future and getting married and living together and stuff like that, um, you know, I'm old school, Gen X, you know, say what I mean, mean what I say. And so for me, you know, any future plans, say, with regards to finances and stuff, 50-50, straight down the middle, no need for a discussion. Like, it's just fair is fair, the end. And so it was, you know, again, a bit jarring when, like, I that's how I approached the future that we were discussing. And she said, okay, so the mortgage payments and utilities and stuff like that, once we, you know, add them all together, that we would be paying um, based upon percentages of our um, income. And even then it might have been not even like gross income, but net income. You know, what you know, take take home income. And so that if, you know, if my um income was 10% more than hers, then I would be paying 10% more of the bills. And, um, you know, and again, um, how couples decide to handle their finances is up to them. And if both parties agree, that's great. Um, but for me, like I said, 50, 50 down the middle, the end. And so this percentage crap <laughs> I just said no nope that's that's ridiculous that's ridiculous you know I, I and the thing is like we were both um you know working positions where we would get like you know merit raises and um you know promotions and and you know and bonuses and stuff like that and so it's like, you know, what the hell? Like, I don't want a situation where we're recalculating the percentages every three to six months. Um, n no. So, um, you know, that part I just disagreed with. But to each their own. Um, but where it got really telling for me was that, you know, this was in regards to... Um, my house and paying the mortgage and utilities and stuff like that. Um, she had bought a townhome uh, like a year or two ago and her plan um, was to, you know, when we moved, moved in together, got married, that she would move in with me at my house and she would keep her, town home and rent out her town home and that would be in her name remain in her name and she would take the you know profits that she was making off of that and if at any given time in the future she decided to sell the town home that you know return on equity and stuff would go to her because it's her townhome. And so I think you can see like where I'm going with this is that, you know, to, um, you know, my covert, um, you know, narcissist ex girlfriend, um, when it came to stuff that I owned, that was kind of like more on my end. Um, then it was like, Oh, we need to divide that up 50, 50 when it came to stuff that was on her side, that was in her name, then it was, oh no, that's mine. I own that. So, yeah, I mean, again, I think it plays right into that, you know, the narcissist approach towards reciprocity, fairness, that um, it's alien to them. It is something that they... Um, are aware of consciously, but it, it's almost like this 
guideline. Like it's not something, you know, that they're aware of it, but that's not something that they need to adhere to or feel any moral or ethical, um, you know, impulse to adhere to. So just very, very strange. I, um, you know, I did run into, um, a lot of that with my, um, malignant narcissist ex-wife at the um, end with the separation and the divorce where, you know, again, when I was trying to propose things that were 50, 50, um, she was more concerned in making my life difficult and painful. And so, whereas I might say something like, here, you get this car and I'll get this car and, you know, both cars are equal value. So, you know, we'll be good to go. She would say, no, we have to sell both cars and then take, you know, the money and divide it up and then, <laughs> then divide it up based upon the um, percentages of the divorce. So again, um, you know, I mean, people can argue or, you know, have different perspectives on that. But for me, it was, it was the same type of deal where, you know, she was in this mode of, and again, it kind of plays into the whole um, malignant flavor of narcissism is that she was not out to win. She just wanted to make sure I lose. And so she would make a lot of decisions and do a lot of things that didn't necessarily benefit her, but they hurt me. And in the end, that was her number one. I mean, honestly, it is <laughs> even today, but, um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that, um, yeah, I won't go into like the specifics of each one, but just a lot of stuff that came up, you know, at the end, um, of the separation as we were going through that and the divorce where the idea of, you know, having things be equal, having things be a win, win was just thrown right out the window. Then it was like, you know, clearly she was like, I don't care if I win. I just want to make sure you lose and I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen. Um, to the point that, um, Surprisingly, her lawyer during the um, divorce actually, you know, proposed and accepted, um, you know, modifications to the divorce agreement that actually benefited me because um, I think even her divorce lawyer knew that she was just not in her right mind and that, that, you know, that shifting of priorities was not benefiting her. And I think her lawyer, you know, understood that like she, the lawyer was hired to help her client win, not necessarily to hurt me. And so there were some changes where things had been modified to be more of a win win versus, Oh, this just hurts me. So, um, yeah, um, I just wanted to, you know, quickly make this video, um, you know, again to just kind of point out, you know, those red flags where the narcissist, you know, does or says something that is not what you would expect from a normal person. And that if you're in a relationship with someone, and things like reciprocity um, is a concept that they don't understand. Things being equal is something that they don't understand. If they make it clear that they even within a relationship, that their priorities are more important than your priorities, that um, you know that they avoid a win-win situation and prefer just to make sure that you get the short end of the stick. Um, 
then yeah, I mean, please <laughs> you know, take a second to think, do you want to remain in that relationship because you might be with a um, narcissist? So hopefully this video has um, been helpful.